with any other scene in any way. It's just there because boobs. Classy. Oh, we better hurry. I think that's our boat to hell. Our heroes, one by one, find their way onto a boat leading to the tournament. You remember that scene in Mortal Kombat where they board Shang Tsung's boat and it's very dark and mysterious and the air is thick with magic and danger? Yeah, this is nothing like that. <laughs> On the island, June tracks down Kazuya since she recognizes him from their childhood and tries to give him back his mother's pendant. But he slaps it away because, oh, he's dark now. Why are you so upset? Is it because your father threw you off that cliff? <laughs> oh, well done, Holmes. I think you've solved this mystery. Why are you so upset? Is it because your father threw you off that cliff? What? I knew that getting revenge was the strongest reason for living I would ever have. I swore that nothing would ever stop me and willingly sold my soul to the devil to make sure. But that's wrong. <laughs> she has the best dialogue in this movie. The devil? But that's wrong. Bracket is no mad dog killer. He is after something. Kazuya challenges her to a fight for no real reason. But before they get it on, Nina attacks from the rafters with some kind of strangling wire thing. You know, the Uzis you had from before might have worked just a little bit better. Or maybe another hand grenade. Just saying, you got him completely by surprise that time. Oh, well. Kazuya kicks her ass at about five seconds flat, but that's when Nina's evil, okay, eviler sister Anna joins the party. I'm afraid you failed for the last time. Oh, where's that light coming from? I'm sure you would have been wonderful in the competition. <laughs> oh, the fuck? A rocket launcher? Because that just screams Tekken, right? Chicks with RPGs interrupting martial arts battles. Oops, gotta go. I guess I'll let you live until tomorrow. <laughs> Those two must be up to something. Um, hello? Go get her? She's right there! She's out of ammo and she's running in heels! Chase the bitch down and shove that fucking rocket launcher right up her ass! The next morning, everyone's brought together so the tournament can start and the Mishimas can explain the rules. You'll also see several recognizable characters from the Tekken games, like Paul Phoenix and King, who's also one of the characters from Cheetah Men. And I hope you got your fill from those three seconds of cameo footage, because none of these beloved characters will show up again until the last two minutes of the movie, and all they ever do is stand around. Hey wait, that's not Pegasus, I know who that guy is! It's Miles Edgeworth! OBJECTION! Defeat me, and you will win one billion dollars and the title of World's Strongest! Hey, Hatsumishima! This is payback! It's that girl. Oh my god, I love it. Someone actually wrote in the script the words, Julia throws a tomahawk at Heihachi who catches it in his mouth and eats it. Oh no! See, what's funny is I don't actually question that he can do this. Just when did he know that he could break metal with his teeth? I mean, did he practice or something? Ow. Oh. So the tournament starts with them just running off into the jungle and fighting whoever they run across, which seems like a really crummy way to run a martial arts tournament. It's really disappointing how this movie is edited. There's not really any martial arts battles in it. They're pretty much all one-sided beatdowns that are resolved in under 10 seconds. The cop from before, Lei, sneaks off from the tournament to investigate the secret underground weapons lab, where he gets caught immediately because the guards, you know, have guns. But a friendly Terminator named Jack saves him. I'm looking for Sarah Connor. Kind of a long story with this guy. Basically, he wants to find the scientist inside the lab so he can cure this little girl's terminal illness. Edgeworth is meanwhile in the control room of the very same lab monitoring the tournament, looking pretty bored actually, and how can you blame him? So he decides to spice things up a bit by unleashing his secret science experiments out into the wild to attack the competitors. Hey, what is that thing? Please don't tell me that's the bioweapon we're looking for. That's Roger. We manipulated a kangaroo's embryonic DNA. Why? Dramatically increased mental and physical faculties. Hmm. I want to conquer the world by using science to turn an ordinary animal into the most lethal creature ever imagined. But which one? I've got it! Of course! Deadly assassin boxing kangaroos! It's the ultimate weapon! You should see what's on the grounds now. <laughs> Is it really that shocking to you? Now you know what it's like to feel the pain of betrayal. Okay, so now this movie has dinosaurs with cloaking devices. Yeah. 
that's the secret weapon the Mishima Company's developing. Invisible dinosaurs. I mean, who needs rifles, tanks, lightweight body armor, aerial combat drones, and cruise missiles? We need invisible dinosaurs. Nothing could possibly stop those. Except people with rifles, tanks, cruise missiles. <laughs> what good is Tekken? It's an ancient voodoo. Against real adversaries like Rex, it's worthless. Rex is the perfect commando for ground-level guerrilla combat. And I will be the one at the helm! Controlling the Mishima conglomerate, and thus, ruling the entire world. Of course! Meanwhile, June and Kazi are about to fight each other again, when suddenly June senses the invisible dinosaurs approaching, because... Ah, uh, because she can. Clever girl. Something is very wrong here. And the award for best original screenplay goes to... not happen in Tekken! And you fight some stupid shit in Tekken! But not dinosaurs, unless you count Alex, which is really just a texture swap of the fucking kangaroo. And if that's the case, I want to see raptors wearing fucking boxing gloves! Kazuya finally kills the dinosaurs and reaches the tower when Edgeworth stops him. Hold it! Take that! <laughs> and he gets his swishy ass kicked with barely a fight. Because nobody wants to see competitive martial arts battles in a Tekken movie. While Heihachi finally gets into a fight with Kazuya, Lee retreats back into his lab and activates the island's self-destruct mechanism, because sometimes you just feel like blowing up yourself and everything you own. Oh! I'll never give it up! Not to anyone! Oh! Team, there's an emergency escape submarine. Ah, uh, silly question. Do any of you know how to drive an emergency escape submarine? I sort of fell asleep during orientation. I mean, who would have thought someone would actually blow the island up? And back to the fight. My favorite part of this is that the obnoxious music is actually drowning out the dialogue. What's wrong, Kazuya? Get up! This can't be everything you've got! Kazuya gets knocked out, and June starts spewing some lame hippie crap about peace and love and forgiveness. Yeah, like a guy who's cloning dinosaurs for the purposes of world domination is really gonna listen to Reason Lady. That's when Heihachi goes off in one of the longest, most rambling villain monologues I've ever heard in my fucking life. Words like justice and truth are empty concepts that have led societies through cancerous histories. Through the ages, those who have blindly believed in these absolute uh, uh, truths have uh, fought and died uh, over empty platitudes. Today, you'll find people mistaking their own greed for truth and eating the planet out from under them and condemning themselves to total annihilation. Chanting their democracy and their freedom as though they were a religion. They're cheerfully justifying their journey towards self-destruction. But how does any of that justify the way you've lived your life? Don't you get it? The only way to truly salvage this disgusting world is to destroy everything on it so a new world can be rebuilt. You monster! My Tekken will create the destruction of the devil and the renewal of the gods. I don't know what that sentence means! Oh, thank Christ. The lab finally explodes, which uh, doesn't seem to really affect the guys inside the lab, even with slight tremors, as they finally reach the escape submarine. A blast door starts to close, and Jack has to use his super robot speed to catch it and hold it open. Okay, let's think about this. Lei and the others ran for that sub the instant they heard the alarm go off. How is anyone supposed to reach the fucking sub after setting the self-destruct? What good is an escape sub if you have no chance of escaping on it? Leave me behind. Go now. Jack, no! Goodbye. Kazuya and Heihachi are still locked in combat as the island explodes around them. It's very search for Spock. Now let your hatred grow into power! And now the soundtrack switches to rap music. 
Anyway, Kazuya finally beats him, and the self-destruct causes the volcano on the island to explode, and I'm pretty sure that's impossible to do even if you had all the nuclear weapons in the world. Lay surfaces in the sub, and we see the other Tekken fighters, for about five more seconds, just standing around before we go to credits. This movie is one of the purest examples of bad 90s anime. It's poorly acted, ridiculously scripted, the animation is uninspired, and the localization is downright embarrassing. Bottom line, it's a brainless, pointless adaptation of a silly video game franchise nobody could ever possibly take seriously. So of course, in 2010, they made another one! The live-action Tekken movie! It's gotta be better than this, right, Burton? Burton? Am I stealing your spot? Yes, sir. I heard that curtain. Jackass. Gotta get lost. Grenade. I need them notice. How can you play so many shitty games? When you pass out, you steal on the drive. I'm moving you back to this party on crack. The spoon is the only angle back. Spoon is very bad. Spoon is very bad. Spoon is very bad. It's a multi-gene life form. Why are you so upset? Is it because your father threw you off that cliff? What? Ah! I'll never give it up! Not to anyone! Ah!